So, how are you finding MCM Comic Con this weekend? Well, it's it's a bit quieter today, yes. but it was a very busy day yesterday, and um, I did a, 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 a convention here, I think it's about 10 years ago, and I think after that I swore I'd never do one in NEC, but it's <laughs> changed, and it's lovely, and I love the orange and red carpeting here, and um, I enjoyed um, watching all the people in their costumes as ever and I've met some lovely fans. <laughs> so with, uh, with regards to the fans, um, what do you think has led to Blake Seven's continued and sort of like very passionate, very dedicated sort right. of fan following to still yeah. to this day? Right. Well, as you probably are aware, it's the 40th anniversary from when it went out in January and we're very delighted the BBC have really at last or more warmly um, recognised Blake 7 by releasing the uh, box set, re-releasing the box set DVD for the 40th anniversary. We're delighted about that. And I think we have to thank not only, but quite especially Horizon, our fan club, and Diane Gies, who was there and started the whole thing up all that time ago, um, for, for being there all this time and being supportive and interested and coming to see shows that people have been in and keeping up the magazine or website. We also can thank, certainly for the last six, coming up seven years, um, Big Finish, for the wonderful um, time we've had as actors. And as far as I understand, fans have really appreciated the Big Finish audios and the terrific scripts written by you know people like Kevin Scott and. Uh, um, Simon Guerrier and uh, we've been proud to do those, those a lot of those scripts I must say and um, with lovely directors like John Ainsworth so I think that's all helped to perpet per perpetuate the interest as well as things like events like this and the signings we've done over the years and meeting fans. Um, how has the process been different you mentioned Big Finish um, obviously audio based versus um, the original run on television yes. um, how has that process been differently for you and how have you found that sort of doing both the television side of it and then sort of? Well I, I, I won't forget the first time we were all in the little studio which I think the first one we did, well, I think it might have been down at this at, at Tunbridge Wells studio, um, but it was strange because we were all meeting up, then there had been a bit of a time lag, we hadn't all seen each other, although some of us have stayed personal friends, um, Sally and I are personal friends and Jack Jacqueline, when she was in South Africa, you know, we used to talk every Sunday and things. Um, and the boys had had personal uh, friendships as well. Um, it it was so strange because it felt it took one back because the group dynamics were similar and people were behaving <laughs> surprisingly in very similar ways. You know, <laughs> Paul was telling the stories. I was always a bit quiet. Um, Sally might have a big laugh and something falls down or falls off or gets knocked over. I don't know, there was something about it that was just so recognisable. And doing the scripts, because the scripts were, I mean, we, I mean, when, when a character spoke in a way that Callie doesn't, for instance, it's so strange how it's like in your bones, you immediately know this wasn't right. And it, 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 it was quite rare that it happened, you had to say, to the producer, I'm sorry, it, um, I just, it, this is not right, or it's too colloquial or something, and they were always very willing to respect us and go, yes, yeah, that's fine, we'll change that. Um, so it was very, very familiar, even though we were sitting in front of a microphone and not running around a studio, you know? Um, so Blake Seven set the template for quite a lot of modern science fiction we've had. Um, it's very similar feel to sort of Firefly. Farscape, where you get this band of rogues thrown together onto a spaceship and thrown out into the wider universe. Um, do you think Terry Nation scripts and ideas are, are something that's endured across modern well, science? Well, do you know, because I am not, um, I have to admit, I'm not a, a somebody who's so into sci-fi, um, <laughs> you tell me things and say those names which don't mean a lot to me, but um, I know from uh, fans' questions like yours just now and things that people have asked previously that obviously there is something that's gone down there is a 
legacy somewhere there. Yeah. Oh, would fact. you like to see a new version of Black Seven Book? I, mean, I think it would be terrific to see a new version. Um, I mean, yeah, I would. I would. I mean, I loved. I mean. Blake's Junction 7. It was terribly flattering <laughs> to have those wonderful comics doing that, that film. I mean, so that was fun to watch. I'm not saying that the new series would naturally be along those lines. But yeah, I'd be very intrigued to see um, a new Blake 7, a new cast and a new concept. I and mean, something's been rumoured since the end of Blake 7, really, is this bringing it back at some point because it's, as I said, it's such an enduring thing, it's still got that no, beautiful cold this state. It's so extraordinary that they haven't, do you think, I mean, do you think they ever will? I mean, it's just extraordinary that they haven't after all these years because there was obviously it got, it has something going for it and then, you know, when, when we meet fans and we meet fans' children and there are fans' grandchildren that have been turned on to it by their, by their relatives, you know, you think, well, oh, they like it too, so. If if it was remade, who would you like to see play your role? Well, I'd have to think really long and hard <laughs> about that. I can't say that anyone immediately springs to mind. <laughs> I can't. Billy Piper? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. But I can't. I don't know. I, I have to think about that and cast that properly. 